Friends, let us join our hearts and our voices in this evening's holy night call to worship. If you are like Joseph and you are seeking truth, there is room here for you. If you are like Mary and you are seeking rest, there is a seat here for you. If you are like the wise men and you are looking for a sign, these candles are here for you. If you are like the angels and you cannot help but sing, there is a melody for you. Come in, you are in God's house. Love was born tonight and there is love here for you. Let us worship the God of love.
It is Christmas, which means God is here and you are loved. May that truth change you. May it inspire you, challenge you, and burn in you like the light from these candles. For tonight, we light the candles of hope, peace, love, and joy to remind us of our journey to this space. And to those lights, we add the Christ candle, for the wait is over. Love is here. Thanks be to God. from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18 through 25. Listen now for the Christmas story. Now the birth of Jesus the Messiah took place in this way. When his mother, Mary, had been engaged to Joseph, but before they lived together, she was found to be with child from the Holy Spirit. Her husband, Joseph, being a righteous man and unwilling to expose her to public disgrace, planned to dismiss her quietly. But just when he had resolved to do this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son and you are to name him Jesus, for he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what had been spoken by the Lord through the prophet. Look, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son and they shall name him Emmanuel, which means God is with us. When Joseph awoke from sleep, he did as the angel of the Lord commanded him. He took her as his wife, but had no marital relations with her until she had born a son, and he named him Jesus.
The story of birth of Jesus continues in the Gospel of Luke, chapter 2, verses 1 through 7. In those days, a decree went out from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be registered. This was the first registration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. The Gospel of Luke continues chapter 2, verses 8 through 14. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth, peace among those whom he favors.
The Gospel of Luke continues. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child lying in the manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen as it had been told them.
let us join our hearts and minds in prayer on this holy night. In the holiness of this night, Lord Jesus, we've come to hear a story we love. At long last, we see this baby born for us and for the world, and what joy fills our hearts. We've come because we knew you'd be here, asking each of us on this night if we have room for you. So we've come with room in our hearts, as broken or fragile or ashamed or fearful or hopeless we may feel. We've come just as we are with room in our hearts, the grieving, the sick, the struggling. We've come just as we are with room in our hearts. We have room for you. We have need of you, deep and aching need of your hope, joy, love, and peace. Lord Jesus, come and meet us here as one who comes to change our lives forever, as one who requires us to reorder our lives to pay attention to you is one who urges us to recenter our lives around you as a vulnerable newborn who insists that we make room for you. Come and meet us here. Help us to watch for the signs of your coming into our midst, not in the splendid palaces of power, but in hearts humbled by need. Help us to believe that the darkness of cruelty and sin will never overcome the light and the mercy of Christ. Help us to endure, knowing that the evil and injustice of this world cannot prevail against your word. In the holiness of this night, Lord Jesus, we've come just as we are as we light our little candles, pierce the darkness with your light, that we may know your divine love has devoured the night. Be born in and among us tonight. Be born in our lives now and always. We ask as your children pray in one voice. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
On this Christmas Eve, help us to bear gifts like the wise men, the treasures of our time, our talent, our resources. Help us also to bring the gifts of our poverty like the shepherds, that we may be enriched in mercy, in kindness, in radical generosity and sacrifice. May we also bring our lives like Mary and Joseph and gather at the feet of the Christ child. Bless these gifts to your service, to the peaceable kingdom, in the name of Christ in whose name we pray, amen. Oh, my God. 
Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Good to be with you. Good for us to be together. I hope you feel welcome. Let us pray. Shatter the silence, mighty God, with your glad and glorious greetings. Banish all our fears and give us faith in Jesus Christ, the risen Lord. If there is anything said from this pulpit that is against your will, let it come to naught and do no harm. But if there is anything said from this pulpit that is according to your will, let it be heard as if sung by the voice of angels, that hearing we might believe and believing obey. Amen. I wonder what your favorite Christmas traditions are. I wonder if you'll get to do them all. Anticipation is one of the very first Christmas traditions. What will we get? What will we get? It began, that Christmas tradition began when the, the shepherds started on their way to Bethlehem. The Savior of the world, that's what the angel said. But what will we get? Will he be born ready to fight? Will he be beset with huge muscles, the kind that will be needed to take on the oppressive forces of Rome? What will we get with this Christ child? Will he be born with tremendous intellect, maybe already able to talk, able to inspire a troubled community as they meander out of their hopelessness? What will we get with this Christ child? Will he be born with ample resources, maybe arriving with piles of money? to relieve them all from the burden of their poverty, what will we get? That tradition continues to this day as dawn breaks on Christmas morning and we shuffle off to the foot of a Christmas tree. What will we get? What will we get? It makes me think of the first and only time that I ever went ice fishing. Have you ever been ice fishing? I grew up in a place colder than Michigan, Maine. And in Maine, the lakes freeze. And when they freeze so well, you can put a shack out on them for days and weeks and sometimes even a month or two. Men and women go out to ice fish. I can remember being invited. I can remember myself riding along in a truck over the ice all the way out to the shack. I was invited by my neighbors to their shack. I was about 10 years old, and as I drove out, as we drove out onto the ice and I looked out, I wondered to myself, what will I get? What is underneath this ice? What will I get? We drilled our holes and we put our flags over the holes and we trudged our way back to the ice shack. And I pressed my 10-year-old face up against the plastic window of the shack. Then I waited and I waited, and wouldn't you know it, up popped a flag, and it was one of mine. And so I flung the door open and charged out toward the flag, falling down several times on my way to it. And my neighbors, older boys, they leapt over me and waited for me to show up at the flag. And I pushed the flag off the hole and pulled my gloves off of my hands, and I reached for my line with the fish that I knew was on it. What will I get? Visions of a two-foot 
Lake trout flash through my mind. Hand over hand, I pulled the line. I pulled it up from the hole until I was soaked. And I laid the line on my lap and there was nothing there but an empty hook. I was drenched. What did I get? Nothing. Unless you count a pair of frozen pants. And yet, all of these years later, I can tell you about it. I can tell you about it in such a way that you even you were able to be there with me just now. I can tell you about it. I remember it. I can tell you about how they made me promise not to tell anyone what they were using for bait, as if I knew what those little teeny fish were. I can tell you about sliding around on the ice, pretending to be on skates. I can tell you I did not bring enough warm clothes. I didn't catch a fish. But this was a day that I will remember, that I do remember. Among the many days in my life that I do not, what did I get? I got to go. I got to be part of it. I got to be part of something. Hmm. And that's how it was for those shepherds. Jesus was just a normal baby. Might they have even been disappointed with how normal he was? Normal cheeks, normal parents, normal needs to be fed and changed. Was this just an empty hook? No, because they got to be part of it. They got to be on the front end of the greatest story ever told. They got to be part of the narrative of healing and preaching and sharing and loving and breaking bread and making miracles and dying and rising and hope and redemption that this baby boy will bring to the planet. What did they get? They got to be part of it. Oh, man. we get to be part of it. Is it enough to be part of it? Did you know that you're part of it? Do you know that you're a part of this great wave of God's purpose and meaning that God has coming to shore for all creation? You know, it might be that when we look back on our lives, we will remember all the things that we did wrong. It might be that when we look back on our lives, we will remember disappointments we've had with ourselves and with others. And it might be that when we look back on our lives, we will look back with regret on all the things that we didn't get out of this life. But I hope that it's not all. I hope that when we look back on our life, in the sober moments, we will remember how we got to go, how we got to be part of this, how we got to be part of this great narrative of God's love in this world that took hold on that first Christmas. And I hope that we, we will remember how we got to contribute to something important in this world. 
how we were part of some extravagant kindness in this world. How we invested in someone's personal comeback. How we shared some hinge moment in someone else's existence. How we made a simple gesture with our hands that was exceedingly meaningful to someone else's heart. I don't know what you're going to get. I don't know what you're going to get this Christmas. I don't know what you're hoping to get from God these days. But let us be so grateful that we have the chance to be part of this together. To walk together and, and become more loving and hopeful on this journey to Bethlehem. It is a gift to be part of it, to get to go. It might be the greatest gift of all. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God, and all things came into being through Him. 
and without him not one thing came into being. What has come into being in him was life, and the life was the light of all the people. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness did not overcome it. And the Word became flesh and lived among us, and we have seen His glory, the glory of a Father's only Son, full of grace and truth.
Great God, as you came at night when all was still, so enter our lives this night. Illumine our paths with the light of Christ's presence that we may clearly see the way, the truth, and the life of our Lord Jesus Christ who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. friends as you go as you go out to be part of it may you love God so much that you love nothing too much and may you fear God enough that you fear nothing at all now, on behalf of everyone here at Kirk in the Hills we wish you all a very Merry Christmas and all God's children said Amen, Amen.